Tribe of Mentors, Real Estate, Australia, number one agent for Ray White, residential, five years in a row, 30 years of age, question number one. What is the book or books you've been given most as a gift and why? Or what has one of these books greatly influenced your life? What book or books? Probably piss off a lot of people when I say I don't read books or I don't read enough books, right? Um, everybody is different. I love the idea of reading books and I can't tell you how many I've kind of picked up and not been able to finish because I just make excuses for not finishing it. Um, I'm big into watching people practically speak, live their life, who kind of inspire my day to day. So there's a certain number of people that I follow that excite me, inspire me, motivate me, and, and you know, kind of read energize me from, from a day to day. The Gary Vaynerchuks of the world. You love Gary V. I love Gary V, but he's not just it. I mean, the Inky Johnsons on the world, you probably don't know who Inky is. I don't know, who's that? Jump on Instagram, have a look at Inky Johnson. He's, he's, he's a motivational expert. The content he puts out and what he says is just so logical and I, I resonate with it. And people kind of connect with, with different sort of Susan, people. Susan, Inky Johnson, we do. We'll, let's get onto him, do whatever we gotta do. Buy the coffee mugs, the posters, everything. Let's just get immersed in this guy. The Will Smiths of the world. Um, LeBron James is of the world. Um, I'm fascinated by athletes, people who are at the top of their game, the best at what they do. LeBron James lost um, you know, the championship to the Warriors last year. The next day he's posting on Instagram in the gym training for the next season. Like That mindset to me is everything. You've um, lost me totally. Just tell me, what sport's that? <laughs> okay. What is, is that basketball? It's basketball, right, it's basketball. NBA, NBA. Okay, so this guy, was, okay. So what you're saying to me is, you see sports people, there's some chemical there, ingredient there, you highly, highly uh, value. Athletes, athletes. I mean, uh, and, and anyone, anybody who is great at what they do, I take inspiration from and I wanna know their story, I wanna know how they do what they do and I like to kind of pick apart certain aspects that I can apply in my own business that is gonna create value, right? Um, I pay attention. I'm really good at paying attention. I've said before on, on interviews with you many times, I'm not good at a whole lot of stuff, but a couple of things I do really well. Paying attention is, is, is one of them. Um, and if you pay enough attention, and these kind of resources are available to everybody at google.com, it's pretty simple, um, or youtube.com, you can really pick up some golden nuggets that will help you through your day to day. I think in whatever you do, not just real estate sales. Okay, pay attention. And I think sometimes people pay attention, but to the wrong stuff, isn't it? Because you can pay attention, you can participate in things, like you can give your, your mind focus and energy, and you're just saying that books is not your thing. It's not. Videos, you've just, I, I presume watching videos. Big time, big yeah. time. So presentations, um, keynote speaking, you know, games, interviews, um, documentaries. Okay, Gav, question number two. Yes. What purchase of a hundred bucks or less has most positively impacted your life in the last six months? I had to think really hard about that. Like, what, what can you get for under a hundred bucks today that's going to majorly impact your life? F for me, it was the, uh, the portable phone charger. Like, I, I find that a huge problem t today because you're on... So you're talking, uh, is this like this sort kind of thing? To me, that's a game changer. E right. ev every day it's in my car right. because I find a car charger doesn't boost it enough right. or quick enough. I mean, I carry that around with me and, and no matter what, I'm never running out of juice. If my phone's off, I'm not contactable. Every time my phone rings, that's a new business opportunity. I don't look at a phone call as a phone call. Right. I look at a phone call as a business opportunity. And if I don't have access to those opportunities, we've got a problem. So, so Gav, um, do you find that you're charging, do you, like if you had no charger with you, your phone would be gone by what time you reckon? Oh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m., yeah. Next question, how has a failure, apparent failure, or a failure set you up for a later success? Do you have a favorite failure of yours? Um, I fail every single day. Um, I make mistakes, usually every single hour. Um, it's, it's hard to kind of identify one that has shaped my business, but you know, all, all I can say is perspective is paramount with regard to failure. Some people will look at failure and it will set them back. 
Um, it will prevent them from getting to the next level. It will prevent them from progressing. Other people with winning mentality will look at failures and see them as a bump in a road. Now they may have a bad day or a bad hour or two hours, but pretty soon or in a short space of time, they'll get over it, they'll move forward, they'll prevail, they'll learn from it. Like I say, they will adapt what they learned from the mistake into their business, at their craft, whatever it is, they'll get better and move forward. So I welcome failures. I'm great at failing and I'm also good at learning from, from when I okay. fuck up. You just heard what Gav said. He gets better, not bitter about a failure. Same thing happens to one person. Yeah. One person gets smashed. Yeah. Another person doesn't like it, but says, okay, uh, what do I get out of this? What's the learning? Um, and, and, and just by the way, like I'll, I'll have a good, you can ask the guys on my team, I'll have a good one day a month minimum when I'm a shit magnet. You know what a shit magnet is? No, but I want to hear it because <laughs> for some reason that word's going to be one that'll be plagiarizing very soon. It's got oomph about it, hasn't it, Susan? A shit magnet. You know, you know when you kind of start off the day and things go wrong? Yeah. And then mentally you kind of just create this sort of belief around for the rest of the day, things are just going to go wrong. You know, mistakes are just going to happen. I'm just going to attract shit. I become a shit magnet. And so I know when that day is happening and I just say to myself, today's the day when the shit magnet is played. I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to get to bed early. I'm going to wake up tomorrow. It's going to be a new day. We're going to do it all again. It's going to be fine. Uh, a lot happens over a sleep, doesn't it? A sleep, you know? New man, you wake up a new man, get a good sleep. It's like a computer has been unplugged yeah. and you just plug it back in and it's smooth again. Gav, why are you laughing at? Because <laughs> I love you, you're the best man. I love if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, metaphorically speaking, getting a message out to millions yeah. or billions, what would it say and why? Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. I love that. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Yeah, that would resonate with you as well. Gav, but to me, actually, I have to say to you, you know where people fuck themselves? They think things last forever. Yeah. That's where they screw themselves, yeah. right? Yeah. That resonates with me, but in your words, why, why is, would that be your billboard? To me, I don't like regret. To me, you know, God forbid, I could walk outside of this office, get hit by a car and it's all over. Mm. Right? I can safely say if that happens, I have a smile on my face because I don't have many regrets, right? Um, when I go shopping, when I want to go on a holiday, I'm not the sort of guy who thinks about I'm not going to buy it because I want to save a hundred bucks or whatever it may be. It's just lifestyle, like we said at the beginning, is important to me. Um, tomorrow is not promised to anyone, so make the best of the time you've got today. And, and I find that, you know, breeds optimism and um, gives you an attitude of, of, of gratitude, right? Gav. Yesterday I was talking to some a, a guy called Brenton Illick from Elevate uh, Your Auctions in Melbourne, good auctioneer, and we were talking and I, for some reason, what came up, one of the times that I was ill, yeah. a guy next to me was talking to another guy and I was here and this, this guy had three weeks to live, right? Yeah. And this is what he said, Gav, because it pretty much summarised what you said. He said to the guy next to him, what I'm really pissed off about is I'm not going to get the stuff that I wanted to get done in three weeks. And he goes, I'm not going to get my bucket list. I'm not going to achieve my stuff. And he goes, that's what pisses me off the most. He, get, he got up and walked away. The guy that was left, I looked at him. I said, that's fucked. <laughs> yeah. And he said to me, one of the most profound things, he goes, it's not three weeks. He's had his whole life. That's gold. Isn't it? That's gold because you, know, you, you always hear of these stories, and I'm not saying it's the general norm, but you, know, you hear about these stories where someone who was perfectly healthy, good family, no issues, had a cough, got diagnosed with an illness, and then in a short period of time he was done. And um, you know, to me, like I said, there's there's... There's no better theory to breed optimism than that. I mean, everyone's got to be grateful in, in terms of what they've got now and they've got to make the absolute best of it. So I do. Okay.